Chris Petri here. Thanks again for stopping by. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do some swatches of common materials that you might see when you're doing la uh, landscape paintings, farms, um, doing architectural type renderings of homes, buildings, uh, city scenes, cityscapes. Um, so let's get right into it here. We're just going to do a few, you know, uh, renditions or, or, you know, small compositions of these different uh, facade materials. So we'll start out with this stone here. This stone is called uh, roughly coursed ashlar, and um, it's really predominant in the Northeast United States, this style and the colors, selections, and it's a mix of some granites, mostly granite stone, and um, has a lot of blues, mostly blues and grays with some browns also and rust colors, so it's really a beautiful looking stone. Um, and uh, it's very popular, again, in the Northeast United States. So I, I'm very familiar with this, seeing this all the time. So I really feel like it resonates with me. So I'll, it'll be easy for me to kind of create this. I realize, too, some of you might be from different parts of the world and um, different uh, areas in the United States and so forth. Um, so, you know, sometimes you might not uh, see this style of stone all that much, and it might not look so common to you. But... Um, We'll do some brickwork, which is very common to everyone. Brickwork is kind of um, red brick and, uh, you know, those kind of um, colonial style bricks and things like that that are used in schools and public um, buildings and, and uh, very popular in homes and things like that. Um, that that we're all familiar with. Uh, that, that's very popular with uh, throughout the United States and even the world, especially, um, you know, in Europe and um, probably uh, – uh, other other areas uh, north, probably Canada, um, even down into um, Mexico. So, yeah, red bricks, uh, common bricks, that kind of style. Everyone's sort of familiar with that. That's very, uh, you know, commonplace in in the uh, a lot a lot of parts of the world anyway. And so let's try this though. This is a little not as common maybe everywhere, but still very beautiful. And um, we'll give it a try here. So let's. Uh, I'll start off and just get the general idea of it doesn't have to be exactly like this we're just going to try to um, get something close to what we're seeing here and what I'll do is I'll leave the joint spaces in between the stones that's really important here and it doesn't have to be exacting as long as I think you're getting it close it should be fine there's some Basically, it's mostly squares and rectangles. And I wouldn't worry about it. Mine's going off just a little bit, uh, but I'm not going to, again, I'm going to start to just do my own thing here. It's really hard to try to copy from this, honestly. But if you can just get the general idea that there's pretty much Usually, hmm, there's not many. That might be all right. This actually... There we go. 
go. And we have a large stone there. There we go. All right, so that's not too bad. It looks pretty good. Let's start getting our paints mixed up here and we'll get some of these colors and shapes going. So we'll look at the um, photo here and you can kind of see a lot of grays, blues with some rust colors and browns and tans in there. So really a nice kind of selection of uh, blues and browns. So we'll go with some blues here, some brown, some blue. Um, I can see a little bit of green in there. Some orange, kind of rust looking colors. A little bit of the um, charcoal colors too, like that. With some blue mixed in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I think we have a good range of colors. Maybe we can add a little, a little bit of that orange. For that rusty, some rusty colors there. Okay. And I'm just going to go and start here and kind of get the feel for things. I'm using a square brush here. This is the Princeton uh, Art and Brush Company. Uh, number six shader, basically a flat brush and we can always remember that uh, these colors are going to dry a little bit lighter than when we put them down on the paper. And I'm leaving the uh, joints white. So the joints between all the stones, I'm going to leave them white. You can always go back. We can always go back in there and do a light wash over that uh, the joints if we want to. And mortar joints between stones can be colored. Sometimes they use dyes in the, uh, the mortar. The Portland cement. Sometimes they just leave it plain cement, which is kind of a, a grayish white color. We can use a tissue to get some light effects on the stone, so we can do a little lifting up like that, here and there. Gives it a little more um, sort of a variation. And I'm careful to take water, rinse the brush, check off some water so that we're not flooding this with water. We want to make that each stone um, pretty much just the right amount of water in there, not flooding it out too much, just basically a damp brush and we go in and just take the uh, paint out of our palette here. And that's all we really need to do, rinse the brush dry off some of the water, go right into here where we have our pre-mixed colors all ready to go. And then we can do that. And we don't really need to do a lot more. Then we can go back in, rinse the brush, dry off some of the water on that sponge. 
and then we can get some lighter tonal values in these stones, maybe pick up a little more color. And I think this is really looking fine. There's some bluer um, colors, very light blue. So we can get some of those up here. So I'm trying to work in some different variations of colors. There we go. We can't go wrong with using a lot of different colors and mixing things up here. keep working our way through this uh, stone facade. Some texture. Again, we can use our paper towel or tissue to get some variation. Some of the color patterns are diagonal. The grains inside the stone itself have some diagonal um, values, almost like striping. We can also do some splashing. Gives it that kind of feel. I'll splash a couple spots here and there. And we're getting there. We actually have a lot of this completed already. And sometimes we'll have to go in and just do a quick pencil line if we left one out. Maybe draw, dry a section off there like that. Then we can get a little more paint. Like that. And you can see we're coming, we're really coming along fine here. Mixing our colors really well. And you can see it's pretty exacting, but if you have if you have a a flat brush like this, it is it is so that would be the perfect brush to use when you're doing square object um, subject matter like this, like this type of stonework. Some stonework we need round brushes to do, but this particular stone style is definitely um, flat brush works perfect for this. So.
Yeah, maybe we make a little bit of a darker stone here. Like that. And I just try to keep looking, looking at my stonework and kind of make sure I'm mixing up things with the colors. Look how good that looks. A couple more splashes just to add that stone feel. Okay, now what we'll do is we're going to let this dry for just a few minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll maybe consider putting a little bit of color in the uh, cement joints of the stone. I think that might look good. You can see in this picture that it is like almost like a uh, grayish color. So cement that they use for stone is called Portland cement. And usually once it's um, set and dry, it's got this color here. This looks like standard um, stone cement that's used for... Um, Ashlar stone and most all uh, stone that you see on facades of buildings where it's basically just uh, Portland cement mixed with sand and water and then they use it in a dry kind of uh, pack. They call it a dry pack uh, mixture, which is not too much water. That's kind of different if they're doing brickwork. Masons, if they're doing brickwork, they use a really soft mortar, um, which is kind of very like soft and it's... Um, they use it to uh, set the bricks with a very soft mortar with a lot of water in it. Stone work, on the other hand, is um, they use very, very dry stone mix, uh, more, uh, cement mix, which is almost like if you grab a bunch of cement and squeeze it in your hand and you drop it, it's like it lands like a, like a meatball or a uh, ball, actually. So it's not s soft and, and uh, the consistency of like mashed potatoes. It's more like... Um, kind of like sand that's been wet with water, so it's kind of very dry. It needs to be that consistency because of the weight of the stone. Uh, and it's also less shrinkage if you have less water in the uh, cement mixture. All right, so I think we're going to do some colored mortar in these uh, joints here. Maybe we'll go and we'll match this here. Let's match this. It's kind of a a like a, a grayish color with a warm gray color with like some uh, gold in there. So like a grayish gold color. Maybe like this. Maybe with a little more blue in there. That to me is sort of what it's looking like. Blue with a little bit of orange. A little more blue. A little more water. And I think that does look pretty close. A little more blue. Yeah, that, that's about pretty, pretty good, I think, right there. All right, so we mixed our mortar cement color. Let's come back and we'll add that in over the stone. We'll let this stone dry a little bit. It's pretty dry now. It's drying pretty quick. But let's uh, give it a few more minutes. Uh, I'll take a break for five minutes, and then uh, we'll come right back. And we'll finish this swatch up, and then we'll do another one. We'll do an interesting brick pattern next. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so we're getting started again. I hope you're really enjoying this. We're doing some beautiful uh, swatches. These are great to have. You do these swatches, you put them in a folder, uh, and you might label your folders like architecture. So maybe you have an architecture folder and then you do all kinds of interesting things with architecture, maybe facades like stone, brick, um, all kinds of interesting, maybe stucco, uh, really fancy stone, let's say, things like that. Uh, you can also um, do some architectural type uh, swatches with different maybe um, wood sidings and um, 
Maybe you can do things like vinyl siding. You can kind of do all kinds of different interesting patterns with all the different facades out there that you'll see with whether it's uh, buildings, houses, homes, um, things you'll see in maybe uh, see, uh, landscape paintings. Maybe you'll see rock walls. So you want to maybe practice different kinds of stone that you might see out there. And you just do it. You find pictures online uh, that look like they resonate with you. That, that you say, yeah, that really does look like the stone walls I've seen near my house maybe or places that I go to visit often or frequently on vacation, whatever it is. And then you would do those. You would take those photos and, and use them for your swatches. You put them down on paper. You maybe just m make a quick label on the bottom of, of it, what, what it is, what type of stone it is maybe, or, or where you've seen it uh, in your uh, travels and, uh, or near your place where you live. And then you have that. You put that in a folder. And trust me, when you start working and you have a painting you're going to do and you say, oh, wow, I need some ideas for um, stonework. I'm doing a, a farm scene and I need some rock walls. I need to s – and then you go right to your – uh, architecture folder and you take out all your swatches you've done over the couple years or two three years however you know however however long you've been painting for you go in and you grab those uh folders and you you have them and you can refer back to these and then you say oh yeah remember i painted this uh, with chris petrie we, we, we did this uh, online on youtube and we created these stone facades these small compositions and uh and then you recall back when you did it, and then you'll be able to actually recall pretty much how you did everything. So it really will be helpful to you. All right, so let's get into it here. Orange and blue. So we used blue with a little bit of orange to give us kind of like a kind of like a warmish gray color, cement color. Now we're going to go in and do the joints. Um, that looks pretty good. And we can just lightly put them in, not too much water. Just enough to coat the paper. And already I think it looks really good. It looks like it matches the picture. Just a damp brush and that little bit of paint. Look how good that looks. That really matches nicely. It really looks like the our photograph. We try to be exact, you know, try to get it pretty close. Maybe I'm starting to run over into my stone I'm seeing there, my pieces of the stone, so I'm going to be a little more careful now to try to really, maybe we should use a, um, a uh, smaller flat brush or a pointed brush. Let me see if I can find a I'm going to use the uh, Prang brush that comes with this Prang Oval 16 set. This will work a little better for us, so I can get that more exacting in between the stones. This way I'm not running the wash over into the stone areas, because then that makes it look a little bit like odd looking. We worked really hard here to get those stones to look good, and, and we don't want to kind of ruin it and get sloppy and start painting over the stones. So that's why I say please Try to be careful when you do your cement joints. You could leave them white too. There are sometimes when stonework is done, they, they do use a very, very stark white cement, but that's not that frequently. It's done mostly with uh, the standard cement, Portland cement, which is basically crushed, crushed stone pulverized stone into a fine powder and then they mix it with water and sand and it reconstitutes into a hard, extremely hard cement. So there we go. That looks like it matches the photograph really well. All right, so we have our first swatch done. Let's stick with our game plan. We said we're going to, once you lift up your tape, you're going to see how great that looks. You have it all framed out. Like so. This looks really good, framed out with some tape. Gives it a nice crisp look. Okay, then we'll take a pencil and a small ruler. And we'll make a small line just so we can write.
kind of accurately here. You can even make two lines if you want to be really neat about it, but I think one line is fine just so we don't kind of, I mean, it's all up to you. If you want to have it a little neater, that's fine. If not, you don't have to put a pencil line on there. I might not usually put a pencil line on there, but I know a lot of times everyone likes to kind of rush through things like I do. And then I think it looks good though. Pencil line here, and then we're just going to call this, um, Roughly coursed Ashler stone. And I did it in some gray Sharpie. I can't find my black Sharpie right now, so this one works pretty good. All right, so we have that labeled. Then we can erase the pencil line if we want. And let's get started on another. We'll get our tape. I think we'll, we'll do maybe four. So I'll try to keep it level with this one here. Like that. Actually, I'd like to keep it exactly level. Let me do that. Okay. And just we'll tape off this next swatch the same way. I'm going to try to get this same height right across. Okay. Now, let's see what we have. Let's do a brick. I have a lot of stone there. Yeah, let's do this. This is uh, English bond brick, which is kind of like a common brick. And this is somewhat of an English bond. It's not a strictly English bond. It's got a little bit of a different uh, That's a herringbone bond. That's a uh, running bond, normal running bond, standard running bond like that. Okay, I'm going to do something like this, but I'll probably I'll, I'll just do this. This looks good. We'll, we'll stick with this. So what we would do here for this is probably the best bet is to um, make the lines across the paper and measure the lines so that they're pretty accurate. So we could say like a half a centimeter maybe, or we could use our, yeah, that would probably be the best bet to kind of measure this here. Yeah, it's a half a centimeter per brick coursing. So each brick coursing is about a half a centimeter. So we're just going to take our, um, we're going to take our, I'll use the Sharpie here that we were using before. And I'm just going to make a mark every half a centimeter and just go right down the line here. So this way we have the marks perfect like that. Then the next thing we would do is um, take our pencil and then we already have this up here, this line up here, which is the tape mark. So if we carefully put our pencil line right where that tape mark is, then we can just kind of keep our ruler pretty straight, just like this. You can kind of see how that ruler is level and you just keep moving the um, ruler down on the hash marks here every half a centimeter and that's all we have to do just like this a light pencil line is fine I'm kind of drawing them a little darker so that you can see them on the camera here on video but you could do them lightly just so that you see them at home
and they usually stay pretty. Now, if you're kind of a little bit tentative about doing it the way I'm doing it, which is kind of doing it by eye and keeping the ruler level, you can always do the same thing by making the same hash marks on this side of the tape down the page. That might be better. So if you think you can keep the ruler straight level like this and just keep going down, fine. If you need that second hash mark over here on the right, please do that. That'll keep it guaranteed straight. You just make sure you start at the same place up here, one, half, 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 half a centimeter all the way down, hash marks, and then you line up the ruler on those hash marks and then you're all set. So here I'm pretty much keeping my ruler level. Go slow if you have to. I'm moving kind of quickly here. And I might move my tape up just a little bit. I won't bother doing that. I'll get another piece of tape. I might be being a fuss budget here, but I want to start this first course of bricks out correctly. So I just do that. All right, perfect. Now we're going to use, let's see what brush we can use here. All right, this one's going to be a little bit large, a little bit too large. I have another flat brush which is even smaller, which is like this. Let's use this. And that should be good. It fits right in between those lines. All right, this is the one we're going to use. This is a number two by uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company, a number two shader, flat brush. So we'll use this. And, um, Trying to think, maybe I'll get some fresh water. Start off with fresh water. And then we're going to mix up the colors next. And um, I might just uh, do a quick. We mixed a lot of different colors, so let's kind of keep our colors from getting too uh, muddy. We also use black. Um, we will use some brown in here, maybe a touch of black too, but we'll keep that separate up here. So let's start mixing our colors. I'll mix the colors maybe with this round brush to start with, and then we'll use the the small uh, flat brush to do the bricks. Actually here what we can do, which is going to be the best bet, this cement, you can see these mortar joints in the brickwork are kind of a gold color, so let's let's paint that first. That's that's an advantage you have with the brickwork. You can kind of do the um, cement joint color first as an underpainting, and then you go over with the darker colors of the brick on top of that, and then you get the same here we, we're using large stones. You can kind of see we have plenty of working space to kind of paint in the joints when we're done with the stone, but here it's so fine and small. Uh, we could have made this brick pattern larger if we wanted to, but we're kind of sticking with matching the size to the same swatch to the same size as what we're seeing on this, the, uh, the screen here on our phone. Or if you're using an iPad, that's a fine too, or a computer screen or TV, whatever you have. So what I can do is I'm going to probably lightly erase some of these pencil lines so that they're not too... I did them dark so you can see how I did the exor uh, did this swatch and how I kind of approached it by with using the pencil lines. But now to get a better finished product with the actual swatch and the paint and the bricks, I'm just going to erase most of those pencil lines. But I can still see them quite a bit. Can you see them on camera? You probably can. I think it's still pretty visible. That's fine. I think that's good. All right. Now let's do our color of our mortar joint, which is like a golden color. And that's a dyed cement. So they added a, a dye to the cement to get that golden color for the, um, the mortar in between the bricks. So fresh, clean water. I'll use a large brush to do this wash. So we get our water, and then we say that color is like a gold-orange color. Not too difficult to mix. 
we're really going to be able to do it pretty easily. We're going to use some orange and some brown, maybe a little bit of yellow. So we kind of mix it around and see what we have. We need a little more yellow maybe. So I'm going to try to keep looking at it as I'm looking in the picture. Maybe a touch of blue. Just a little bit of blue in there maybe. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. I think that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm just going to go right across. Lightly, if it comes out too dark, no problem. You can always lighten up a little bit like that. It'll probably look better if we do that. We'll get the paint on the paper quick. Zip this right in like this, like this, right? Now to get a nice bit of variation within these cement joints, all we have to do is take a tissue and blot a little bit on, on the paper like that. And that should be fine. We have to let this dry 100% before we go back in and start doing our bricks. And we're going to do those again with this uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company number two shader, which is a really super small half a centimeter wide um, flat brush. So let's take a break. I also mentioned if you're really enjoying this video, um, please click the subscribe button below on the right hand side. That'll keep you in contact with me. You'll see um, the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see a little probably a little small um, thumbnail of my next video that I've created or so. You'll see some of my new videos coming out. This way you keep in touch and you're able to watch and see what I'm doing on YouTube. If you want to follow along, we're doing videos like this once in a while, but mostly we're sticking with uh, your standard subject matter for watercolor. So every week I'm usually doing seascapes, landscapes, flower paintings, figure work, city scenes, um, some still life things like that. We do that all the time on my channel every week, but once in a while we'll do some swatch work, we'll do some technique work, brush work, we'll look at our palettes, what kind of palettes we use, and I have a lot of those type of videos in my archives. I think I have over 350 archived videos, and if you ever want to go back and research other videos that I have, and you want to learn about a certain subject, like if you want to learn about my palettes and paints, you just type my name in, Chris Petri. Very simple, you type in Chris Petri, and then you might type in palette, or Chris Petri paints. And then when you do that, all my videos will show up that are, you know, the last couple years or so. You'll see all my videos that I've done on those, um, on whatever subject matter. So if you wanna see uh, paintings of architecture, like buildings, houses, things like that, you just type in Chris Petri house painting, and you'll see probably about 10, 20, 30 different interesting paintings of houses and buildings and city scenes, things like that. Those are my, you know, archive uh, YouTube videos. And then we're always making new ones every week too as well. So we're always working forward. And um, we also have a lot of archives here on my channel. So take advantage of it. Um, it's always great to go back and see a lot of the other things we've done because we've always are working at a really good pace here and we always try to I always try to bring a lot of information into my videos a lot of details so that you have um, lots of uh, things to think about while you're working and uh, things that you can you know move you know bring forward in your painting and in your style and in your techniques as an artist so you're the artist you have to decide if you want the detailed information if so then you can always go back and study up on a lot of the uh, previous videos we did and um, we'll uh, get ready to start up again let's just take a quick break we're going to let this dry it's still a little bit damp and then uh, we'll get our bricks in and we'll have another swatch done all right here we go let's get these bricks in here um, let's start off at the bottom actually probably would be easier for us to start at the top and work our way down the page We'll mix up the colors first, so let's get some water. We'll take, use this um, brush here, our flat brush number two. Let's get some brown in here, some orange and red. So we see browns, oranges, and reds in here for certain. We see some orange, light orange, 
we see some darker bricks with some blue. this. So we're getting a good range of colors here. Okay, so we have a nice range of colors. I think that's going to be fine. We can start out. Now the thing is I'm quite used to painting these swatches, so I'm going to do it a little bit easier. You might have to make some very, very fine pencil lines. You might do the same thing and measure across this way. Let's try that, just so we can kind of see how this works out. So each brick is about, we could say each brick's about a centimeter. Maybe a little more than a centimeter. Let's see if we could, maybe I can use the one inch scale. All right, so these are half inch. All right, so I'm gonna use the standard scale and just do this, half inch, one inch, inch and a half, two inch, two and a half inch, three. So those are the whole bricks, the full bricks here, full brick wide. And then all we have to do is transfer that down every other every other coursing of brick. So you'll see that I'm going to go right down the page, skipping over one course of brick each time as I go down the page. And the same thing here. And once you get that one started, then it's easy. You can just match up each one as you go down the, the brick uh, facade here. So these will follow the same pattern. Here, whole brick here. A whole brick there, right down the line, like that. Over here, same thing. Like that. So now you have all your whole bricks that go right down the coursings of the brick. And then in between those, you have half bricks. And they sort of work out if I'm looking at this correctly, they start out here, and I'm not sure how they line up exactly. We might go with a standard brick coursing. Let's go with a standard brick coursing. So that's easy enough. All we do is do the same thing. We just stagger the brick pattern. And you see how I'm staggering the brick pattern? And then we just use that same. And what I do is I do it very, very lightly now. I'm, kind of, I'm doing it darker so you can kind of see this on the video. But So that's our brick coursing. It's just standard brick coursing. Running bond, they call it running bond, and that is um, going to be a lot. You can do it this way too. It's up to you, but I think this will be easier to explain how I did it. And Let's get in and we'll start doing our bricks. And uh, This is fun. You just grab any old color. As long as you're mixing them around, you should be fine. Do one there, another one here, and then you leave a little bit of that spacing in between the bricks. It's a little bit, uh, take your time doing this, definitely do not rush this. Don't rush at all, take your time, however long it takes, no big deal. And I'll just go right along here. 
and then we'll do a darker one here like this and you can see I'm always leaving a, a space in between the brick from one brick to the next and that's the cement joint the mortar joint between like that and then we go right down the line here you can splash a little bit on there like that and then once you start to get the feel for it you can pick up the pace a little bit but it is kind of like a time-consuming thing you really have to go carefully to get the the proper look for everything. I mean, you know, it's a uh, and there we go. And you can pick up whatever colors you want, and you want to keep those joints tightly spaced. that. Okay, and I'm going to try to zip as fast as I can through this. Watch as I go here. Let's see how much I can do quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we don't want to get too far off course. No pun intended. And we're mixing up our colors. And I don't, I try to keep those cement joints not too, um, cement joints are usually very uniform, very e equally spaced. And once in a while your brick, brick might get a little bit Sometimes the brick will get a little longer. You just try to keep the spacing somewhat good. There we go. All right, so far so good. A couple splashes on there. Just to give it a little variation. It looks kind of better if you do a little bit of that. Or you, or you could keep it really exact and perfect too. I like to kind of mess it up a little bit. I think it looks better. Looks a little bit loose and, you know, interesting. Variation again, I always like to say that. We try to get variation in our watercolors if we can. And we're always mixing the colors up too, you know, red, some of those darker, like uh, grayish uh, blue. And then we'll do some orange ones like that. Okay, we're almost halfway there. Sometimes you can skip around a little bit if you have extra paint on your brush and you want to do, you could skip around a little bit and uh, get some, um, bricks from, so I'll do a couple over here, like that, then I'll get a couple like this, the blue or darker ones, like that. This one too. Tighten up those joints a little bit. A couple of dark bricks there. A couple of red ones over here. So just mix it up. So we're really kind of doing a good job here. Things are going along well. Take your time as much as you need to do this. I've been, you know, I've done a lot of these swatches, like a, a lot. 
and I like to paint architecture a lot too, so I'm kind of always doing these. I tend to like to do a lot of bricks and stone and things like that, so I kind of really have worked on these swatches a lot. But if you're just starting out doing them, take your time. Take as much time as you need to. Don't feel like you have to uh, rush like I'm doing here. I'm kind of going at a faster pace only because I don't want to take up all your time doing this the video here. And then you might think, oh, you know, I'm taking, Chris is taking way too long doing the video. I'm getting bored already or I've already practiced a few bricks. I don't need to keep doing them, whatever. But I would say do these bricks. Have fun doing this. We're, we're, we're practicing a lot of our color mixing skills here. So you really, you're focusing in on your color mixing skills making sure you're getting all the variations of color for your bricks through this uh, brick facade, this brick swatch we're doing. You're also practicing your brushwork skills, making sure you can get really accurate brush strokes with your flat brush here. And this is really, really fine. Most times we're not working this uh, tightly, this uh, fine of a pattern, but every once in a while you might have, well, once in a while you might have a project, you have to paint something like this. So you want to definitely um, give it a try and try to stick it out and do the this uh, swatch here, the brick swatch. The stone was a little easier, a little larger areas, I will admit. This is a little more difficult. I just have my hand resting on the paper the whole time and just guide the brush down to the paper and, you know, hand on the paper resting on the board. I have a masonite board underneath me, underneath my paper with some uh, foam board on top of that. And then it really makes life easy when I'm painting. I can just rest my hand on the board. It's solid and uh, works good. Last course. There we go. A little, a little more blue there. A few darker bricks there. So here we go. A couple darker bricks. I'll bring those right down to the bottom of the page there. One more. I'll do one more <clears throat> reddish orange brick here, like that. And I somehow got off track a little bit here, but that's not a big deal. For the most part, another couple splashes. Like that. And then even if you do some spots and then you kind of go over it again, just to give it a little interesting rustic look to it. Like that. So you can just splash a little and then blot up a little bit. That gives you even more texture to your bricks. So it'll kind of look really like true brick is, you know, sometimes outdoors it gets faded in spots and so I think that looks really fantastic. Let's take our tape off and we'll see how that looks. Really, really good. Okay. All right, fantastic. So that really looks fan fantastic. We have the, again, we used the gold color base. So we painted that on first and got a golden orange um, uh, first wash on there. So it's kind of like the glazing technique. We glaze this swatch in first with that golden color with a little bit of orange and yellow and a touch of blue, just a little bit of blue. And um, it came out with that really nice uh, like orange golden color, like a yellow ochre almost. And then after that we paint it over the top with the bricks carefully and that's our result. And then we'll just do the same thing again 
we'll just put our light pencil line here just so we don't go off uh, out of level. And then we'll say this is um, brick running bond. Um, and I would say with orange mortar. Orange, I guess it's kind of gold. Gold or orange, I guess. I remember going to a construction site when I was really young, about maybe 17 or 18 when I was in high school. And I remember seeing it was like a house being built and they were building brickwork on the front of the house and it had orange mortar, similar brick to this too. It looked really, really awesome. So I, that always was a strong impression in my mind, how good that looks like with a, uh, like a golden orange kind of mortar and the brick looks fantastic. And um, all right, so we're actually completed with two swatches. I think let's do two more. And uh, the next one we're going to do is some cobblestones. Let's do some of that. That's really um, let's do these. Let's try them. Those are really nice. That's like field stone. Beautiful field stone. You see this on a lot of houses, colonial houses especially. Uh, you see walls like um, part. Um, I guess like. Uh, People that uh, they section off like years, many, many years ago, they used to section off all their property lines with uh, field stone walls. So this kind of like is reminiscent of, of that. So we'll do this one next. So let's uh, take a quick break um, and we'll come back and we'll do some field stone. And uh, we'll see how that works out. I think it's going to be fun. It'll be a challenge. We're going to have to do some shading, some fine shading in this um, type of stone. But you'll see that we can really accomplish it pretty much uh, successfully by just taking the idea of the lights coming from the top of the uh, wall of the stone here. So our shadows are going to be underneath the bottoms of the stone and the lighter parts of the stone are going to be on the tops of the stones. So that should be kind of a little bit more, you know, not too um, challenging, should be kind of pretty straightforward to do in, in essence. Okay, well, let's get started in just a few minutes. I'm going to take a break and then we'll we'll set our phone down here and we'll create another swatch up here. Okay, so we're ready to start another swatch here. We're going to do our field stone. Um, let's uh, put this up here for a second. We'll tape off another spot here. Maybe we'll make this one a little larger. We'll make this right here in the center. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit larger, larger in size, so we won't be strict about keeping the same size as the screen on the phone. But this is pretty good, I think. This will work out. That's about the same. There we go. Okay. Okay. There's our stone. And what we're going to do is we'll draw in a light pencil sketch of the stone. I'll start at the bottom and I'll try to roughly get the same pattern of stone and shape and size and scale as I can. So I'm just going to try to going to try to And this is field stone, so it's not so much a 
having a really like predictable pattern to it. It sort of is. A lot of times when they're setting field stone, they, um, the stones rest on each other. And there's not as much uh, mortar in between the uh, this individual stones. They're very round, these stones, for, for sure, for certain. They're very round in shape, spherical almost, much of them. And we'll do a few of our own. And if you're working your stones, and as long as you're getting the overall idea, it should be fine. Like, you don't have to feel like you get everything exact. If you kind of just follow, I, that's how I'm thinking of it. I'm just trying to follow along pretty much close to what I'm seeing in the photo here. But I'm not being like too critical. I, I think I went off track in a number of places. And then I just kind of, you know, ad lib in there some of the stones. But I guess it's kind of good to step back and look at it and kind of see if it's matching up closely to what you have here with the shapes of the stones, I should say, you know. So... You don't have to be extremely critical, maybe, of getting every stone exact. But if you kind of get the overall shapes correctly, I think that's fine. And then once we paint things, it's going to really uh, bring everything together and make it look really good. So let's um, take a look at the colors here, and we will we'll do the same thing again here. Let's uh, take our palette and just uh, we mixed a lot of colors together here. So let's start out with fresh clean colors for the most part. And then um, what else can we do here to mix our colors? Maybe we'll use a larger brush. And then here we're going to see that we have quite a bit of the bluish gray. That's a little bit too strong of a blue. So I'll gray that down a little bit like that and then go back into this blue. I have to get some more paint very soon. So that's sort of like the grayish blue colors we're seeing there with a little bit of orange maybe over here for like a warmer grayish color over here. And then the cooler, the cooler gray is over here, the more bluer color. And we have um, some definitely orange and yellow, some kind of gold, orange and yellow, touch of brown, kind of some brownish color stones, a bit of yellow in there, touch of blue. Have a little bit of um, red. Some maybe a little bit of red stones with some red in there. 
So I think that's pretty good. Let's uh, get some uh, clean water. And we'll start right in. And what we'll do is we'll do the glazing technique here for the most part. We'll use a round brush. Maybe we'll use some... Um, I'm trying to think what we, if we have the Simply Simmons. Alright, I'm going to use my Simply Simmons number 6. And we'll start working in our colors. And I'm going to start down here. This one's kind of golden color. Again, we're practicing good um, brush skills, being careful about our uh, brush work here. And what I'm thinking is it's probably going to be better if we do a grayish mortar over the whole thing first, like we did. Let's do that. Let's do the glazing technique again. Let's get this grayish mortar. Let's just use this, what we mixed up already. And let's just go over the whole paper like that. Like that, with a little bit of the... Then what we do is take a tissue and we just blot up. We don't want it super dark. I think that should be good. So we blot up that like so. All right, let's let this dry. So we'll take another break for a few minutes just to let this dry 100%. This has to be 100% dry, but this was good to get this a uh, little bit of that grayish gold, golden mortar color for our stone mortar in between the stones. Now we don't have to worry about going back in and adding in any mortar color. It's already there for us and we just can paint the stones and we'll be done. So let's take another break quick, let this dry. I might use the blow dryer quick and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll start working on the stones. Okay, so we're gonna get back here to painting. I noticed that um, we, uh, we did let this dry 100%. I actually used the blow dryer to dry off this um, swatch up here, this our field stone swatch, and you can see I can just, I can, it's completely dry, you know. So we have to have that. If we don't let this dry 100% using either a blow dryer or waiting about an hour, when we start painting in these stones, it's going to give, give us a real difficult time. It'll, the, the paint will start to cauliflower and, you know, bloom and blossom, and you'll have like that paint kind of like just going everywhere. So let's, let's just be a little aware of that. And, um. It'll be an easier time if we kind of keep ourselves disciplined, make sure we let this stuff dry. And you can do your darks and your lights too at the same time, I think. That won't be a problem. Orange and blue. And I'll do the darker shadow under here like this. Rinse off my brush, take off the water on a sponge, and then use a damp brush and just smooth it up like that. Again, the light's coming from the top. So our light source is up here. Let me see if I can find a Sharpie. Oh, this will work. So our light is coming from here up above shining on the stone so the shadows are going to be on the undersides of the stone and I'll try to mix around my colors make sure I'm getting some orangey yellow stones here use tissues to lighten up lighten up the stone that's a really good technique using a tissue just to blot a little bit of the paint 
on the top areas of the stone. That really works good. A little bit of a darker wash, rinse off the brush, dry off the brush so it's damp. splash for some texture like that the only issue sometimes with doing a uh, underwash like a glazing um, with stone especially you can see there's a lot of lights and uh, and darks in here. So going over with this really strong middle tone th that I did, I just realized now that I'm I've lost some of my really bright lights on the tops of the stones here and there. So that was another learning. Exp this is another learning experience as we go. So you'll always do that when you're painting and doing projects and everything like this. That you'll sometimes learn things and say, oh wow, you know. I realize I should have maybe realized that I needed to capture some more lights on the tops of these stones, which means I probably should have just painted the stones individually and then gone in and done, uh, you know, completed the mortar joints in between the stones last. So I kind of went too quick on my decision to just cover this whole thing with a wash of gray for the mortar joints, and that now is kind of come back to bite me because now I can't get those really nice lights you can kind of see here in the picture. There's a lot of really bright lights. So now we've lost a little bit of the, the brightness of the stonework, but we, we can't really worry too much about it. That's just one of those things where we, lesson learned, we, we um, will come back the next time and do this swatch maybe, we'll redo the swatch. And at home probably, hopefully, well, you probably followed along as I was doing this, so you probably are in the same situation I am now where we don't have as many lights as we would like, but we can still have fun here and get some really good color washes and colors and different tonal values in here. and. Do some and then we can use the tissue and lift up a little bit of the paint on top like that so that's a good way to battle back here dark, more blue, and orange. Rinse off the brush, dry off the water really good on a tissue maybe, and then just work that up like that. And that creates the feeling of roundness to the stone with that dark shadow underneath. Let's do some more shadowing. I think I'll have just enough of that blue paint left to finish the swatch here. And let's see, we have this too over here. Okay.
and maybe not maybe not all of them are going to have that really really strong shadowing some of them might not be as round some will be more square across the face of the stone more square and less round and that would be where you wouldn't see as much darker shadow underneath the uh, stone itself Good to a little bit of splashing. Gives that feeling of uh, stone. So we're really moving along pretty good here. And this is where we can add a little bit of extra Marks here just to So we are moving along here pretty good. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. One more splashing.
how to refill my blue there. Luckily I had an extra paint palette nearby. go back in and add some more colors to this obviously you can always t touch up with so we get our our main colors in for our stone to start with now like we're doing and then we can always can always infuse different colors mix in some more interesting colors Infuse some more reds in here to make it more interesting. The, the washes, that's up to you. You can kind of go in and add some more subtle colors to um, get things looking a little more uh, color harmony working within the painting. So if I add a little more red here and there, since we added some up here. We could add some I think that stone is all one stone here, like this. And some darker darks under there. Looks pretty good. I think we have some really good and I noticed there's some darks in between the stones here and there you can kind of see that so if you go in and do these darker areas where the in between the stones the really really darkest dark areas you can use some brown and blue I think sticking with the same colors we used all the way through here on the stone. That should really, just a damp brush, hardly any water on the brush, just basically straight paint. And maybe get some of the darker. But I wouldn't do it everywhere, I would kind of just do little spots here and there. 
So essentially we're just going to do this really sparingly, the uh, really, really dark, dark mix, just like that, every little once in a while. Add in one of those little spots of dark. Because we do see that when we're, we're actually, we, we can see it in the photograph here, that there is that little bit of really, 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 really dark um, color or tonal value. And it actually helps us because if we add in that really, really dark tonal value, it kind of brings back those lights again so that we do have that feeling of really bright light on the tops of the stones. So I think we kind of in the end here, finishing up our video, doing these uh, interesting swatches by adding some of these darker darks. We're kind of making the medium tones tonal values kind of stand out more, or even the lighter tones in this stand out even more by just doing some of these really, really nice, super dark darks in the uh, undersides of the stone like we're seeing through the, the painting here. So I'm just going to try to look at this again, just to see where they are, those really, really, really dark bits of... Um, but I don't want to do too many. I think that'll be counterproductive at a certain point. So I think that's good. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, maybe over here, just a little bit. All right, let's call it a day. We've done a lot of great swatch work here. And again, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Let's peel off our tape. We're going to uh, label this field stone. have a great we'll have a great folder with lots of swatches that we can refer back to when we're doing some interesting landscapes or city scenes or farm scenes things like this it's going to be a great help so we'll put here field stone All right, I hope you had fun here. We had a great time together working on our swatches. We did three. We did our ashlar stone. We did our brick running bond brick with orange mortar, and we did our field stone swatch. I think if you do these three, you're going to be really satisfied. You're going to have fun doing it. We're practicing, again, great skills with our color mixing. We're also practicing really, really good fine detail with our brushwork. So, and also brush selection. We were kind of scratching our heads saying, which brush are we gonna use for each of these? Cause they're kind of all different. So we kind of worked our way through using different brushes, choosing our brush selection for the best result that we can get from this. So this is just a great video. We learned a lot. Hope you're gonna come back another time soon here to my channel. We're having a lot of fun here again on my channel, um, on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you soon on the next video. Happy painting, and of course, enjoy the watercolor journey. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.